the Lord this morning. Uh, we thank all you who were here earlier this morning. It was our first kickoff of our adult class back in the building in, in some time. We thank Brother Stanley and the leadership here for the foresight to like, hey, let's get going. So if you don't have a book, please see Sam afterwards. He has a few books for those who want to attend next week here in the, the building. For those who are attending on uh, online, please, uh, when you come to the building the first Saturday of the month, there may be a copy at that point. There's limited copies, but we will get more copies for everybody. So we thank the leadership for uh, opening back up Sunday morning um, Bible classes starting at 9.30 every, every Sunday. Every Sunday. Once again, our, um, our own brother Roy Knight is here today from India. Um, he is one of the many uh, uh, ministry leaders that we sponsor throughout the country. He is coming not only to bring God's word to us this morning, but also to tell us a little bit about the work that's going on that he and his family does over in India. So please be attentive to his words and what he says um, so that we also, we will all know, you know, what our uh, monies go for uh, spreading the gospel, not only here in Sacramento, but abroad. We thank Roy for that. Thank Roy for that. Um, we have a diaper drive that's going on. You may have walked by a box that's in the lobby. Um, our own Ruthie Zavala um, gave birth to our, our baby last week, or last month, um, and we are doing a diaper drive for the family. Um, so see Betty, Betty Conley about that, but there is a box in the foyer for you to be able to drop off um, diapers that are much needed by the family. Once again, there are changes in the Saturday drop-off. We're only doing them once a month on the first Saturday of the month for you to be able to come by the building to pick up your um, emblems, for you to be able to drop off your uh, monies for contributions, or for you to get any and all questions answered by the leadership. So just be mindful of the fact that we will only be open one Saturday um, per month at the first Saturday of the month here at the building. Um, the Brinkley's Bible Study, um, new topic, new date, new time. Um, they're moving from their Monday location to Thursdays at 7 o'clock. Um, the information for that is in the bulletin. Um, brother, brother and sister Brinkley um, are still facilitating that. Uh, the topic of this uh, lesson is in the meantime. 
So once again, the Zoom information um, is in your bulletin, or you can get that information probably from Jarrett, who I see here, or the Brinkleys themselves. Um, once again, Daily Bread Ministry is kicking off uh, what they do best, which is taking the gospel to those who are lost. Um, next week here, they will meet here at the building at, Saturday, at 8 o'clock. Our own sister Nedra is um, a big part of that. Um, you can see her for more information about that, but they meet up, they make the meals, prepare the meals, and prepare themselves to be able to go out and not only, only be able to give people on the streets um, physical food, but also to give them spiritual food, to let them know that we are a church that doesn't forget about those from the least to the greatest. So once again, if you want to participate in that ministry, please see Sister Nedra for more information. Once again, in February, we have the weekend to remember. I think the discount rate is over, but there's always room for more. So if you are, Pancho used to always say it best, if you've got it all together and everything's fine in your relationship and your family, this may not be the place for you. But if you're looking for more information and you're looking for more ways to make your relationship with your significant other better and enrich it um, and then to be able to help others, this may be the weekend for you. February 11th through the 13th, uh, the event will take place in Napa. Uh, the event cost is 175, but you can probably see Brother Winters for more information if you need help with the, um, the entry fee. And there's also a room rate if you're staying overnight that's separate from the uh, rate for the conference. So please see Brother or Sister Winters for more information on that. Once again, each week we meet here in the sanctuary, the Spanish congregation meets um, Next door, 1045 sharp. So please make sure that after our Bible study in the, in the morning, our Bible lessons, we get a chance to meet and greet one another. But 1045, we get going so that um, many of our ministries afterwards have time to be able to do the things they need to do here at the facility. Once again, um, there are many people on our sick and shut-in list. Please read them at your leisure. Please call these our members, please call those who, who knew who used to be members here, see how they're doing. Just It takes us to be able to reach them and not the opposite way around. Uh, with that, let us go to the, uh, God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day that you've given us to be able to let us come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, you've given us the ability of sight. You've given us the ability to walk and talk and to be able to spread your word not only within the walls of this church, Lord, but throughout this community and throughout um, this world, Lord. You've given us the ability through your word to know the way in which others can come to you and to worship you and to call you their own. Lord, we just come at this time praying for those who are on their way here, that they get here without any hurt, harm, or danger, Lord. We pray for those who are at home, who are shut in and sick, that won't be able to make it um, to the worship hour today, that we pray that at the next point in time, you will be able to come out and worship with us in spirit and in truth. Lord, we um, pray that you will be with the speaker today, give him a clear recollection of the things he has studied and placed upon his heart um, that he may impart um, your word to us. At this time, um, we bring forth our leadership here to give us another word of, of wisdom and insight into who you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm before you for the call to worship. We had a good Bible class this morning, the first one in 18, 20 months. Uh, we use as a text Ephesians 3, 9 through 11, and the Bible says, I'm gonna go back to verse eight. Although I am less than the least of all of God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Some of the main points we used this morning was um, the church 
in the mind of God. God had you in his mind before the creation of the world. Ephesians 1.4. God had you in mind before the creation of the world. And we said that gives each of us in here value. You don't have to walk around with your head down, low self-esteem, whatever, because God had you in mind. And then also it talked about the beauty, the specialness of the church. And it was only through the church, the wisdom of God, the glory of God, the salvation of God. It was through the church. And that's where you're at this morning. The church. Don't pick and choose this. Don't think, don't minimize this. Don't think you can come and go with it. This church, this church is your life. And so um, that was part of the class this morning. And we're, Glenn and Sam will be on it Wednesday, and we'll be back at this next Sunday, Lord's willing. So this is the call to worship. This is the time to get our minds, our hearts right with God. And if there's anyone on this side that need prayer, you can raise your hand and stand. All righty. All right. See, anyone in this row need prayer, need, need prayer, need strength? Anyone on this side? <laughs> Let's pray. Father in heaven, um, these, uh, we are your people. And we thank you for the wisdom that you had to put the church on display and to allow us to participate in bringing others to you. The Bible speaks specifically about you bringing the Jews and Gentiles together and um, the church being on display about this is how my people will act when um, they have my heart. So let us remember that, Father, and let us value the church as if we know it's your church to take care of, and let us just live accordingly that we bring you um, glory, praise, and honor. Be with us during our worship, and everyone who asks for prayer for strength, forgiveness of sin, or healing, you know what they are, and uh, we know you will continue to be a God that sustains us in all that we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen.
Uh, Heavenly Father, you just have kept us safe during the night. You gave us a nice, comfortable bed to sleep in, and you protected us, because we know at nighttime you're most vulnerable when you're asleep. And you opened our eyes, and when the sun came up, and you blessed us with another day, because we know it's not us that opened our eyes, it's you that opened our eyes. And Heavenly Father, we are gathered here. You strengthen us to gather us here in the sanctuary where we all come to lift you up and praise and glorify you. Heavenly Father, sometimes the truth is not always seen, but we know that your word is truth, and we know that your word is good, and we know that your word is love. We believe that Jesus was in heaven. He came down to earth because he loved us, and he wants to save us from our wicked ways. And we believe that he came down here and done miraculous things, miracles, and great things on this earth. And he still does to this day. Heavenly Father, we believe that he was crucified from a terrible death. He died and he was buried. And he was raised up on the third day. And he lived today. And his blood cleanses us today still. And we ask that we just do not crucify him again and just live right and just do the right thing. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Because there's not enough we can do to thank you for giving him to us. He is the greatest gift on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
morning, church. Thank you, Brother Sam, for that song. I love that song. It's, it's really a, a beautiful reality, come share the Lord, us being able to gather here with one another and, and take communion. And, uh, but, you know, it, it didn't happen by accident, why we're here, why we're able to do this, why we're able to have joy. Uh, so I, I want to read uh, from John, and you, and you don't have to turn there or anything. So it is starting in verse 13, John chapter 15. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friend. For everything that I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. So, of course, you know, every time we, we uh, you know, we gather around the table, it's, it's, it's a very joyous time because we belong to the Lord. But it's also a solemn time, a time of self-reflection because of what it took to purchase us. And, you know, in thinking about that, I know we often come to the Lord with a lot of things. We have a lot of stuff going on. Um, but, you know, I, I encourage us, you know, as we go to God in prayer, you know, that you let the Spirit speak to you. That, you know, you, you, you know, truly understand that we truly recognize what it took to bring us here. And that it was nothing but the blood of Christ. It was not by our own doing. Every single one of us needed as much saving. There was no difference in how much we needed Christ. There's no difference in how much we need him right now. Uh, and I, I, and I, it's, it's a blessing that we are able to recognize that, that we were able to recognize the sacrifice and the love, and that we were able to not just to take that here, but to bring it out there. Uh, so let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, uh, thank you so much just for bringing us here. You woke us up. Uh, and that's not something that everybody got. And Lord, I just uh, we thank you for Christ Jesus, Lord, the reason that we were able to have joy, the reason that we were able to have this abundant life. It was because of the, the body that was strung up on the cross, the blood that was shed on our behalf. We know that it was because that Jesus, that he drank the cup that you gave to him, that we were able to say that we have a, a risen savior, that we have a chance at salvation, that we have a chance to be close to you. I pray that we truly examine ourselves, that we truly look at the reasons for why we're doing the things that we're doing, the actions that we're taking, the words that we're saying. Uh, and I pray that they be in accordance with your will. Lord, I just again pray for the bread, I pray for the, pray for the wine, Lord, that we just, that we take it in, in remembrance of you in remembrance of your sacrifice. There was no greater love than the love that you showed us, and I thank you that we were able to come here uh, and take a part of you and share you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. Just a moment, Brother Derek Brown is going to come. He's going to also share some thoughts with us on the mindset of giving. We support God's work in various ways, but it's important that we understand beyond the idea of a command that we're under some compulsion to give. So Derek is going to talk to us and share with us what kind of mind we should have. We would say, come, thou fount of blessing, bring us. 
to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me a melodious song, sung by flaming tongues above. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure journey to arrive at home. Jesus sought me with a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily Good morning. Good morning. As we prepare our hearts and minds to, to give, um, a lot of scriptures come to mind in terms of what it says in Corinthians about you know, making sure that you have uh, prepared to give. Um, we think monetarily in terms of our giving. And I probably have said this before, but we should also think in our personal, how we give, of our person. Giving here at this point, at this stage, is one thing, but giving of ourselves to one another, and giving of ourselves especially to the Lord for his service, all conflates together as to how we should be and where our heart should be when we decide that we're gonna give and what we're gonna give. Some of us don't have the financial means to contribute uh, like we would maybe want to. That's not an excuse not to give of yourself, your time, your service, your words, your actions, your deeds, so that someone can be brought to Christ. Because ultimately, that's what we're doing. When we give to these missions, it's so that Christ could be preached, right? Well, when we give of our words of encouragement to others, when we live a life that is indicative of who Christ is in it. And we're able to give that testimony to others. That also is to lead others to Christ so that they can in turn turn around and give to someone else. And it becomes this multiplying effect. So as we think about our giving, whether we did it online previously, whether we're gonna put some money in the basket, it's not a one-time thing that we do just here on this Sunday morning. Think about how you can give throughout the week because of all that you've received. As my son said earlier, how Christ gave his life for us. Think of how you've received from Christ in your walk during the week, in your interactions with others, and how you can give of yourself as well as your means. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for our opportunity opportunity to give of ourselves in a way that is selfless just as you gave of yourself to us as we lord uh, contemplate or have purposed to financially contribute to the work that is done uh, to win souls over for you help us to understand lord that you don't need it you just want us to understand where the blessings come from and in turn be a blessing to others to humble ourselves to the process, Lord, that you put before us so that we can understand that 
Everything that we have is from you and through you. And as a result, it doesn't belong to us. We're just being stewards of it. Thank you for all that you bless us with, Lord. Help us to have a heart that is contrite and one that is broken for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If the name of the Savior is precious to you, if his care has been trusted and tender and true, if the light of his presence has brightened your way, oh, will you not tell of your gladness today? Oh, oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? If the light of his presence has brightened shine. Good morning. Dear brothers and sisters in Parkway Church of Christ, elders, deacons, and serving ministers, and especially to the media brothers who have been helping me to be here to share how God is working in India. And I told her, I shine. The forwarding slide tells my, the scripture, Arise, shine from Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Uh, when I came here to the United States, always, um, and I tell brothers, see brothers and sisters everywhere in the morning, they tell, good morning. When I go back to India, in India, when we see people, they never even tell hello or hi. And they, even they see the low caste or Christian like me, if they know I'm a Christian, they turn the face like that. So I learned, and, and I learned want to be good to these people and make them to uh, uh, respond to me or to uh, make them to uh, know that I'm going to preach the gospel. So always I learned that this scripture I tell, Arise, shine. When I see the people, they ask, What? What do you tell Arise, shine? <laughs> and then I start preaching the gospel. And he asked, why I should arise, shine? Because I tell to them, I will not tell directly that you are in darkness, but I tell that Jesus wants to be arise, shine in your life. Maybe you're experiencing any kind of situations, failures or any, any kind, but Jesus wants you to be arise, shine in any way. That's what I'm here. Then I preach the gospel. And once again, before I go to the uh, lessons, I'd like to thank to the Parkway Church of Christ, 
to the elders and mission committee who have been supporting India uh, closely. And thank you, Sister Laura. We are communicating behalf of you to India with us and elders and the workers in India uh, regularly. And your help and your prayers uh, have gone through many villages where you have not even imagined it touched the life of the people who persecuted the churches. And it went to the poor of the poorest, orphans and hungers and leprosy people can receive food and not only receive food, but to glorify our God the Father who is a provider. And behalf of all the members of the Lord's Church in India, I thank to the Parkway Church of Christ members, elders, deacons, and ministers, and, and mission committee, and all the brothers and sisters who are helping us. Thank you. And um, the last visit I was here, it was 2019. I spoke here. That was my last preaching of before the COVID-19. And that the time that I have to go further to preach in many congregations. But after I spoke here, I got on a phone call from India that my dad was sick. And I was with brothers, Brother Stanley Winters and his uh, wife, uh, family, and, and they've been taking care of me when I... I remember Sister Stanley Winters, uh, Mrs. Stanley Winters in the morning... When, I, when I, she came and knocked the door, and I was crying. And she was upset about what is happening, and she wanted to feed me uh, breakfast. But I told her, I'm, I have to go back to India, because my dad was suffering. And he's a healthy man. He's one of the elders of the congregation, and he worked hard, and he's not aged to die. He's like 67. And uh, I have to go, because people need me to go back to India. And I went when I saw he's all, all, already died because the flight from U.S. to India is around 30 hours of fly. And it was a very bad situation. I went through a lot of trauma. And, and then it went, and then the COVID-19 came. And then these all, these two years, I thought, I'm not going to come to the United States. Uh, it was because we were experiencing in India uh, when the COVID-19, even my dad passed away, it's not just he naturally died. He mentioned he's an elder of the congregation and he's a preacher uh, in application, and the doctors just left him alone, neglected, because he's a Christian. He's an untouchable. It's, it's a type of murder. It's a type of persecution he experienced. And, and after the COVID-19, the, the COVID-19 came and the, the, the disease spread in 2020 and 21, and it was uh, bad. And then the vaccination came. They wanted to give vaccinations, but the vaccinations have not reached to the untouchables or outcasts like Christians. And then even it reached, they tried to give not a true vaccination, but they've been giving the expired vaccination like uh, like, uh, like which is expired in the hospitals, like rabies and, and jaundice or so many vaccinations, which is, which is not to key for the uh, COVID, but people were dying. We can't know what is happening here because it has happened because of the persecution. And it's many Christians' life and many brothers, many few of the elders been murdered during this COVID-19. The COVID-19 they used to persecute the low caste and Christians in India. And, that, and then I thought, oh, I don't need to mess up with this, this kind of problems. But I was researching that I have to get vaccination. And then finally I got vaccination in, in 2021 uh, in October. And then I got an invitation from the United States that uh, you have to come to India. Come to the United States. Now I have invitation to go to India. <laughs> Ready to go to India tomorrow. Uh, I got an invitation to come. That's the thing that after two years of time, I have to come to the United States to talk about the defects, 
before and after COVID-19 in India. And then there was a lot of problems going on in India that when they saw the letter, they don't want to send me to United States because I'm going to talk about what will happen in India. So I wrote back to United States to the lectureship, which has happened in Richmond, Virginia, and also the churches here who invited me. They, they just get back to me through the U.S. consulate. Then I have to go from South India to North India to order to board a flight because uh, basically I was denied to fly to United States in 2021 in November. And then in the North India, the American Airlines, they came to know the whole story and they checked about me. I'm vaccinated, good. And then they checked my COVID-19, negative, good. And you have a visa, good. You're good to go, but they bypass. It, it, is, it cannot happen, but it's happened. I believe it's a God providence that I can come. And, you know, I want to let you know that when I was uh, 15 years of old, I believed Jesus Christ. Even I born in a, a third-generation Christian. It's a big story I have, but I have already told, but I'd like to tell this. Uh, when I got baptized... The more scripture I believe I like is the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, 18, 19, 20. All authority has been given. Go into all the world and make disciples. I was praying to God, our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to go to the world to preach the gospel. But the first I went to preach the gospel in a local village where there is no buses, no trains, no transportation, I have to walk, and that, I tell him, God, Jesus, I want to go to the world, but he told, yes, it's a world, you have to preach, I have that story, but God brought me afterwards, the next following years, I went to Germany, China, England, Australia, all over the world, but in 2021, 2020 and 21, I decided, no, I don't want to go out of the world. Because when in India, when the COVID-19 came, they have to test positive, negative to order to board the flight, but the Indian lab testing was giving everybody positive. And they take low caste, out caste, or Christians to the hospitalization because they get a funding for COVID-19 from World Health Organization to order to give treatment. So they need they need a positive patients. And I told, no, no, I'm not positive. I don't want to go. <laughs> the person I was telling, I want to go. Now I tell, I don't want to go. Fear. But our Lord Jesus Christ never gave up. He told, go. All authority has been given. He wants us to endure. He wants us to suffer affliction. To go forward. Do not backslide. I just a little bit, not backslider, but I, I want to avoid in order to go in hospitalization for the false treatment. And then people die. And the funding comes from World Health Organization to criminate. So uh, the system in India, they want patient, they want dead body. So I don't, I don't want to do it. I want to go forward and preach the gospel in India. There are many millions, 330 million people I have to teach to them. And I decided, but in the November, month of November 2021, I have to go, go to United States. Then I came and I praise God. I'm in the United States and, and I realized that God is so wonderful. He can enable two mighty things in our life. And uh, India is a country of Hinduism. Many of you know. And India is a population of 1.30 billion people. And it's a, it's kind of wrong census, but I feel it's more than 1.60 billion people. It even can overlook the China. And then India, in India we've been working all this since years, and, and we established around 78 congregation. And most thing I like the scripture, Acts chapter 16, verse 5, the church has been strengthened and increased in 
strengthen faith and increase in number daily. That was my witness year, even in this COVID-19, the congregation have not uh, gone decline, but it increased. And here I am witnessing you from Indian brothers and sisters, how God is strengthening them and it increased in numbers. There's a big flood and it was not a uh, monsoon. It is in November, there won't be a rain. We have rainfall, and old Chennai city was uh, water, and it's flooding, and it's, it's mixed with the, with the sewage, and uh, so many things happen, but I have to come, and, and during that time, many of our kids in our house got typhoid, uh, malaria, and so many things, and they've been survived, and uh, God is so wonderful. And I like to talk about today about India, the caste system. Here you can see uh, the caste system in India is differentiated into four different who are the first one. I can tell there's a lot of Sanskrit word, but I can tell in English. The first caste is the Brahmin, which is called priest. Uh, academics, who are the first caste, can go to the academics or priesthood. And the second caste, the warriors and kings. These groups can go as an, uh, politicians or, or big officers. The third one is merchants and landowners. These are the people who can occupy the land. <coughs> and the fourth is Sudra, the common people who can operate the government facilities. So these four peoples occupy the whole system of India and they run the, run the country. <coughs> they are around 65%. And there are around 40% of people is untouchable. And if anyone believes in Jesus from this caste, they became outcast or Christian. In that how we are persecuted. When the persecution comes, this is the a subject which we are going through. It's not only a verbally subject, it is a subject we go through in our life. As Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 to 4, about the endurance. I have told you about the persecution <clears throat> from anybody from Hinduism, from the caste, they believe Jesus, they became untouchables, thrown out, they're persecuted, they are killed, they are abused. And how the Indian Christian is still following Jesus? That is a question everybody asks. If they're going to uh, thrown out from the caste system, they're not able to get a good job, they are murdered, they are persecuted, how are they going to keep up as a Christian? That is a wonderful question. That is a subject this morning, Stanley Winters was speaking about it. It's God works in my serious way. It's church, it's mind of God. And these brothers and sisters who believe in Jesus, even they go through, in Matthew chapter 24, the disciples asking to Jesus, when the end of these things, when of the end will come? <coughs> Jesus tells in the last days, wars, rumors, and, and plagues, and disease, and they kill you in the name of Jesus. You'll be hated by many people, if you read in Matthew chapter 24. And it comes... Because of lawlessness, everywhere we see there is a problems and sin, sickness, death, and many people's love of God will wax cold. And they told, I don't want to follow anymore. And that is not a, that's not endurance. Even we see the persecution, even we gone through the COVID-19 pandemic, even not only Indian brothers and sisters, even you've been going through, through the lockdowns and sickness and, and, and some of your beloved ones, loved ones, maybe passed away, we gone through it. But here Jesus is demanding us to end here. But who endures to the end shall be saved. Believe and be baptized, you shall be saved. Everybody is so happy after the baptism. Great joy. 
Yes, that's a great joy. If one sinner repent and be saved, it's a great rejoice in the heaven, even in the earth with us. But it is not end. He wants us to be endured to the end. That's what Jesus demanding to this congregation, to us, to all the brothers and sisters. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness. And witness to all the nation, and the end will come, dear brothers and sisters. The witness is, I am here uh, taking from India, is the brothers and sisters in India, even they face persecutions and suffering, they endure in our Lord Jesus Christ. And I like to uh, tell about this wonderful brother. He's my first baptism, and I was preaching the gospel. It started with me. I, I learned the endure, endurance uh, when I was started preaching, when I was baptized in 15 years, and uh, I, was, I was really uh, touched by the Great Commission. Jesus told all authority has been go and baptize, make disciples, baptize them, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe whatever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. When I see the people believes in cows and monkeys and snakes, my heart was totally want to go and preach the gospel. And in the age of 15 years, when I went to preach the gospel, he was 16 years old, and I decided to preach because I know that this is the time I have to go. To not to keep quiet, to go and evangelize people because I know the gospel. And already authority has been given to go and make disciples. I have received freely, just give freely that they need it. And I went and preached for three years. People come uh, to listen. When I preach the gospel, they, people come uh, to listen. Uh, for three years of time, but I asked them, do you believe in Jesus? They tell, no. Why are you sitting? We don't have any other entertainment. <laughs> you know, so many times we see in, in different denomination Christians, they go to the church for entertainment. But here we see the same thing because they don't have TV or anything. They just want to game, come to listen to the entertainment. But even they, they come for entertainment for any other purpose, but they are listening to the gospel. And when I preached the gospel over there, people received, and then uh, three, three years later, this leprosy man believed in Jesus, and he got baptized, and followingly, the people in the village coming to the Lord, and there was an extraordinary, uh, I can tell that how the gospel has been reached when we are endured, uh, this sister is one of the example of endurance. Uh, I can, you have seen that picture. Mary, she believed Jesus. And after the leprosy man I baptized, there are many hundreds of baptisms. But she's one of the uh, lady who believed Jesus. And she was working with the children in the Sunday school. She goes to the houses and brings children uh, to the Sunday school. Very happy. Uh, but in this photo, even she's happy, but uh, you can see that she's very weary, but she's happy. But her skin has been damaged because of her faith, because she believed Jesus. Her body has been burnt by the Hindu people because she's proclaiming Jesus. When she became a Christian, she went and proclaiming gospel, as I had the great, uh, you know, vision or maybe a kind of uh, event and preach the gospel. Same like I saw in her. When she became Christian, she went and bring all the children to the Sunday class. The people from Hinduism, they saw her and poured the kerosene. It's like a, like a petrol kerosene and burnt her. We took her to the hospital and helped her. Doctor told she's going to die. But she told, no. How could doctor can tell I can die? That's a challenging. In the bed, she's having a full of pain and burnt body. 
she is proclaiming Jesus, I will come back again and preach the gospel. Sister Mary is now serving in the village, endured, endured. And she's serving now more than, more than uh, 60 children in the villages, and that is amazing. She has a witness. She has a testimony of endurance. Here we see in, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, if you see, if we read from uh, verses 1, uh, uh, Paul writes to Timothy, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge quick and de- uh, judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, in, be instant in season and out of season, Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they eat to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and, and shall be turned unto fables. The verse 5 talks about here. The times will come, people will turn, but he wants. He's demanding us. He wants us to be watchful. Even the persecution and the sickness and the COVID-19 can turn away, but here the Scripture tells, be watchful. Be watchful. Thou in all things endure affliction. In affliction, I, I realize the word is is suffering. When the suffering comes, endure. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Each one of us do the evangelist. It's not we are lovers of ourselves, we are lovers of God. And we see here, I have a word from here, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, from the verse, this know also, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 from the verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. The men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blemishers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affliction, truth breakers, truth breakers, false accusers, in incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitor, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Dear brothers and sisters, these days will come. But God is telling here through Paul to the Timothy, be watchful. Thou in all things endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. We, we all have to remember that we have a purpose. As Brother Stanley Winters was talking this morning, it's Sunday morning we come and it's like an institution. It's not an institution. It is a great connection between God the Father, and He climbs Himself. He's our Father, and He climbs us that we are the sons and daughters. And He sent Jesus, and Jesus, Son of living God, and He gave Himself in the cross, and He told us, go and make disciples. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Each one of us, when we go out, we have a ministry that we have to continue. And these brothers have a witnesses in their life. They've been having this endurance in their life. Even their hands have been cut off. I have these photos. You can imagine what is happening. Why this man's having this uh, one hand cut off? Maybe they are handicapped. No! They are not born handicapped. They became handicapped because of Jesus. 
They went and they did their work. They want to preach the gospel because to evangelize every people who are walking in the darkness, they lifted the Bible and preached the gospel. The Hindu people run unto them and cut off their hand. But these brothers and sisters, brothers being continuing preaching the gospel. And they have their endurance. And they're continuing the good work. And these young Christian men and women being persecuted in India when they come to the church, but still they want to follow Jesus. And these brothers and sisters who worship in the, in the uh, leaf-made homes, and the leaf-made homes being burned, even they want to come to the Lord and they want to worship because they endure affliction. You may not encounter these persecutions, but we brothers and sisters in India encountering these persecutions. We always focus on endures. We talk about endurance. We talk about to steadfast, unmovable, faithful. And these brothers have a witness in their life, carrying every day, telling, praise the Lord. Each and every time, praise the Lord. And dear brothers and sisters, this morning, the, the, the endurance which we learned, it was an, um, uh, we, we, even we are in India or in the United States or any part of the world, he asked us to endure. Endures to the end, Matthew chapter 24. And uh, as we are from my family, when Brother Stanley Winters asked me, how is your family? Uh, when I came here, I told, we are enduring. We are still faithful. We are still going forward because Jesus is with us. He told, I will never leave you, never forsake you. But it is our responsibility, my responsibility, the brothers and sisters in India responsibility, and it is your responsibility, go forward. And this is my dad and mom, and uh, uh, they've been, they are the, without them, I'm not here. But more than that, I know that God has chosen me before I, I've been created in my mother's womb. But I believe that each one of us are chosen. That's what we read today in a, a East Church, this subject. He has chosen before the foundation of the world. And... And my dad was, uh, worked with J.C. Bailey, the first missionaries from the United States who came and Canada to preach the gospel. And uh, my dad passed away, and, and he turned the work to my mom and, and also my, my family and the elders there. And you remember my wife, Mercy, and my son, Gabby, Debbie. They are not able to come. They send their greetings and love. And uh, my mom... After my dad passed away, you cannot imagine a house of 31 people. How many of you are experiencing more than five people in your house? <laughs> That's what I want. The, the family I stayed with them, there were five people, yeah. The two uh, husband and wife and three children. That's what I saw, the biggest family. But in our house, we are 31 people, including me, 32. And after my dad passed away, I was hungry because that is, he is the one who is a key who cook food for every 31 people, a big pot of food. And now my mom has taken this responsibility, and this is the group we have in our house. Now somebody asked me, this is a church group? No, no, it's my family. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are adopted kids, they are adopted grandmas and adopted grandpas. And uh, we are all together. And we sleep in a bed, four people. So we sleep in a floor. Uh, we sleep wherever there is a place to sleep. Because Jesus even told, he doesn't have a place to sleep. So we use all the opportunities to proclaim Jesus. And the church in Chennai, after uh, the elders now, we've been experienced like last two years, we have lost four elders, including my dad, we were seven. Now we have three brothers, uh, brother uh, Zachariah, John, and Yohan. 
They are doing a great work overseeing the congregation. They are overseeing the finances and let all the things going well because we were working with uh, 78 preachers. The church has been established in 78 villages where the gospel has not reached. And these brothers have been working greatly. And uh, uh, this is the thing, in all these things, our mission. And I'm going to come into an, uh, uh, reports like what, what we are doing from your, your support, which is overseen by the elders and the 78 preachers in India. Our mission is Matthew chapter 28. And I had a, a chance to meet so many in my travel, Churches of Christ brothers and sisters, and one of the brothers asked me, what is your mission statement? I told, do you have your Bible? <laughs> Here's a mission statement. Matthew chapter 28, 18, 19, 20. Very clear. Very clear. We want to do what Jesus told. Authority is given. Make disciples. Baptize them. And teach them whatsoever Jesus commanded. No any commandments of the man's. And Jesus told, I am with you always. If the Lord Church is with Jesus, is Jesus with the Lord Church, and the Lord Church is going to be with me in the Lord's work. That's what I believe from the beginning. That's our mission. And through our mission, we have baptized many people. And uh, it was a baptism. We baptized... Uh, I think the clicker, the next slide. Yeah. This is the, we baptized in 2020 to 21, around 657 baptisms. And I want to let you know the thing that I was researching from 1960s, from my, uh, when the missionaries came to India, the church and I worked in 1960s, we've been baptized more than 180,000 baptisms. And this 2021, the church in Chennai, overseen by the elders, with your support, we've been able to baptize in 78 villages, 657 baptisms. And here, again, what is your project? When we preach the gospel, we have to encounter with the persecutions and suffering, and people are put into untouchables, orphans and widows, and what, what we are going to do? We are going to start orphanage home or widower's home or old age home. No. We shut down our orphanage home. We started foster care's home because we send the orphan children to the widower's house. So the widower cares for the children and the children cares for the widower. There are no more orphans. They are the mothers for the orphans. And what is our project? Our project is Matthew chapter 25. Verse 34, 20, 35, 34, 35, and 36. Here again, the Bible class we've been experiencing, here he tells Jesus, the king will say to those in the right hand, come you blessed of the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. It's amazing. It's the Lord and the church, God and the church. He has already prepared. Here we see the project when we see the poor and already Jesus has given us the project and he advocated for us what to do. It's very clear, straightforward. I was hunger. You gave me food. The Parkway Church of Christ sending fund every month to feed 600 people every day. Your contribution being going to each people as a food, as a seed of gospel. They are receiving it, and they are coming to the Lord. I was hunger, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was stranger, you, gave, you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. We are doing in India, the church in Chennai is doing this. And these are the photographs of the hungry, what we do. And um, in the, during the COVID-19, we've been providing foods for the hunger. Uh, it was almost um, every day, like in Chennai, 300 meals, and villages, 300 meals. And this is the wonderful photo, which has been 
Uh, I mean, this photo, I like to tell you a little bit. This man was in a street hunger, and I brought a food to him. He told, thank you, God. In India, you know, people always tell, thank you, monkey. Thank you, cow. Thank you, snake. Because they believe these animals as a god. 330 million gods. So this man have a good witness. He told, thank you, God. I asked him, who is God? He told, God is the provider. He knows it. And he came to us and we teach him and he became a preacher among the homeless people. You know, one time I, when I, always when I come to United States, brother, I thank brother uh, Sam King, you know, he knows. In this time, he, he was great hospitality, he texted to me uh, to feed me. <laughs> always, he asked me, do you like beef? <laughs> I like beef because it's a Hindu God, you know. The first time I came to United States, they feed me with a uh, steak. I asked, what is this? We, I don't know about the steak. They told, no, no, you eat it. We'll tell you. And uh, now, I, I want to know what is it. They told, it's, it's a cow meat, beef. Oh, okay. I eat it. No problem. But people know that Indian people believe Hindu, uh, cow is a god. When I go back to India, I told, I ate your god. <laughs> so... So God is a provider when I was in the United States. <laughs> yeah, Brother Sam King asked, you want to eat some chicken? No, no, I want to eat beef. <laughs> so we provide this 3,000 meals every day in our Save Children project, which has been in 78 villages. Every church member learned to take one handful of rice and save for orphan children. And then the contributions from the Parkway Church of Christ and the brothers and sisters from the United States. I'm really thankful of, to Brother John Stewart and his wife sitting here. I saw them uh, as like I met Brother Stanley Winters. I'm here because of Stanley Winters. He invited me in Pepperdine. And the same way, uh, 2019, I met Brother John Stewart and his wife in Pepperdine. And they just learned from me. And they've been supporting every month they are, I told, I'm speaking in Parkway, and I invited, I told to Brother Sam King, can I invite them? He told, yes, and they are here, and thank you, Brother John Stewart and his wife for your, for your continued help and the Parkway Church, and these help with the rice from the church members, each hands every day, and your support joined together, and we provide more than 3,000 children in the Hunger Project. And Jesus told and we were supplying the rice back to the villages from the uh, COVID-19 relief work. And then we thought, why not we can produce our own food? So in, in 2018, we've been experiencing a lot of uh, farmers are suicide because uh, the high caste people doesn't want to give job for the or job to the farmers. So in 2019, I leased the land. We, we don't have own land. God provided we can use it, but now we don't have it. But we lease it under the Hindu people. We give them money for lease it. And we saw some watermelons in 2019 and 2020. We got 75 tons of watermelon. And the people working in the farmers, they received their wages. They are blessed, and the church was blessed. And then we sold it, and then this 2020, we invested again that money into paddy field to produce food for hunger. And in next month, we have a harvest. So we may have, I don't know how much tons that will be invested into the food for hunger project. Jesus told I was thirsty. We are also working on uh, drilling water wells, water for the people. Indian people uh, have a, a water uh, like this. Can you, this is the water well we dig. This is the water looks like in India. Black in color. When I got a cup of coffee when I'm in the United States, I told, this looks like Indian water. <laughs> you know, it's coffee, it's not a water. Then the, they asked me, what is the water, water looks like? And then we've been working all this year around 13 water wells, around 13,000 people receive clean water. 
We are working continually to drill many water wells in India. We need partners to work on that. And we build church buildings, and this is not only a church buildings, that this is that every day they have a worship as, as a worship in my house. Every day they have a prayers. We went and built the church buildings, and it is open for widowers and orphans in a front yard. They stay in a building. On Saturday, they clean it. On Sunday, they welcome members because we don't want to close the building on days. We want to open it, that every day it is open to orphans and widows. And we build these buildings. We've been, we building, we have builded around 16 billion build, build, uh, buildings. And we have a target of 100 buildings from 19, 2019 to 25. Uh, we've been already finished 16 building, buildings. This is the building looks like. And we use also building for the school. And this is the American International School. We are working in India. Uh, this school will help for uh, high caste people can come to study here. So this is new project we are working. And this project helps that American teachers and Indian teachers can work in India to promote education. Through the education, we can bring the high caste people to Christianity. And Jesus told, I was naked, he clothed me. So we gave him like sewing missions to stitch dresses. And so far, we are going, we are helping these people, widowers, they can make a stitching and they can provide uh, clothing for the naked to the poor people. And Jesus told, I was uh, sick, you came to me. This was a wonderful project we did. Uh, I told about uh, people been given uh, wrong vaccination. So the church in Chennai raised 400 vaccination for preachers and church members with the help of brothers and sisters from Parkway and Churches of Christ around in the United States, and we gave them the vaccination. And the medical ministry, Brother Paul Nicholas, is one of the brothers grown up in a church in Chennai, and he and his family been uh, very, very thankful. Uh, they, when they finished the medical, he wanted to serve the Lord in Chennai. During the pandemic to the COVID-19, he helped many people to the medical mission. He needs medical partners to help him. And he, he sent his greetings, he sent his request to join with him. He has a big story. When the people, a Christian, go to the hospital and they are neglected, they are died. So he took a burden, he took a cross to serve the Christian, to, to help the preachers that they can be healthy and preach the gospel. So Paul Nicholas needs your prayer. If anybody is interested on a medical ministry, uh, please share with me. It will be a great help to provide medical assistance for brothers and sisters in India. Jesus told I was prison. You came to me. But the jailers came to me. Wow, what a wonderful I want to let you know the way these jailers have came to me. I, I have experienced one time in my church building, I've, after the baptism, the police officer came to me and, and take me to the jail and beaten me because I baptized people. And this, this police officer came in the 2020. I was thinking, why are they coming now? They're going to arrest me. No. They told, we run out of food in jail. <coughs> because they are seeing the good work, what we are doing. And I told, yes. We prayed with them, and I told to him, if I'm going to give this food to jail, to the prisoners, I will come and pray with them. He told, yes. We went with the food. Jesus told, I was in prison. You came to me. God will make the way. We went and gave the food. We preached the gospel. And we appointed one of the men who repented and been saved, his name is Edward, in the jail to preach the gospel. And we are working on providing Bibles. This year we, we are raising funds for 1,000 Bibles. And we, we, are, we don't have uh, song books. And our preachers in India have, have their own songs. We don't have like a hymn like here. So they like to print it out. They need your prayers to print 1,000 song books. And we need partners to work. This is the Bible school, which is taken a few years before. 
and we are running this Go School of Preachings. And this is my Jeep. In 2020, it told to me I am finished. I got COVID-19 or something. Like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm finished. He's not taking vaccination, so. <laughs> so he got repaired. I cannot move it. And uh, uh, yeah, it is almost old, and uh, I'm looking forward that that'll be a, a, a helpful transportation for me to uh, go to preach gospel, visit members, and in emergency, I can help them. Already, we are working on an emergency van for the church, but that cannot go in the villages, but uh, I'm expecting the transportation is needed for me to go everywhere and preach gospel, so uh, I need Parkway Church of Christ elders and members to a mission committee to pray for me and um, pray for the 78 preachers. Dang, it's not moving. Yeah, and the, fa and the church members in Chennai. And these are the children's. I'm, I'm going to uh, finish it. I, I know that this uh, time is getting over. Uh, these children's, we've been working um, in this every year to provide 3,000 clothing for the orphans and 1,000 clothing for uh, adults. We worked on 2020 end for the 22. We already been given from the contributions. And, um, and these are the children in our, in, our, in our house, in our church. They, they asked me, they called me daddy or uncle. They asked me, I want to become a doctor. I want to become an engineer. I want to become a pilot. And I told, they asked me, why you, are, why you are a preacher, but what is your professional? And what do you want to be when you're a child? I told, I want to become a doctor. And I told, I was thrown out because I'm a Christian. I cannot able to go to graduation. And I told, my dad doesn't have money to go to school. So I have to study all is my Bible. I want to tell you that I'm not graduated in any high school or big university. I was graduated, all is that, because of the persecution Bible. And these children want, they want to be graduated. And due to the lack of financial or lack of, uh, due to the persecution, these children cannot fulfill it. But I told them, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. I will, I will talk for you. And these children need Godfather and Godmothers to give them a scholarship, to go to school, to go to university, and they can be a great Christians to help back the churches in India. And I told to them, if you're going to be a doctor, what are you going to do? I'm going to serve the church. If you get a lot of money, what are you going to do? I'm going to give back to the church. And please consider, dear brothers and sisters, to help some of the children in India, they can be a great professionals and great stars for the Lord in India. Need your prayers to continue your work to reach out the hunger, thirsty, naked, orphan, and sick, and prisoners. And I think I'm end of this my sermon or report, dear brothers and sisters. These all things I shared with you. It is all about teaching of Jesus. Whatever we do in India, in our mission, in our church, in our project, it's all about Jesus. And many people receive the gospel and they've given their life to Jesus, even they know persecutions. You have seen the witness, you have seen the pictures, how the bad persecution is. Even they want to come forward and get baptized. This morning, if anyone here have no hope in your life, have no idea still who is God, if you don't have a faith, but today you feel it in your heart, today is the day, do not give up. Follow Jesus. You're following, but accept Jesus. Accept him in your life. And be baptized. He wants you. He wants you 
to be the body of Christ. Our God wants you to be son and daughters of him. And he wants to bless you to bless the world and do the evangelist work and fulfill the ministry. And once again, I thank you for the Parkway congregation to give me the opportunity. I like to pray uh, with you before I leave because you prayed for me a lot. You blessed me a lot through your support. I like to pray with you. Uh, can, I, can we bow down and pray? Heavenly Father, I come unto you and give thanks for the great authority and only pray for them. And I pray for them. Bless this congregation, elders, deacons, ministers, and mission committee, and media people, and, and all the brothers and sisters, and all the mission work they are doing in the world. Bless each one of them and be with them. Protect them. Bless their families, grandmothers, and fathers and mothers, and children, and kids, and youth, every one of this congregation. Wherever they go and come in, your presence will be with them as you promised. I will be with you to the end of the ages. Lord, the experience we experiencing the COVID-19 Omicron, Lord, I pray for our brothers and sisters will be protected from all this evil and they'll be protected through vaccination and all the medication. And Lord, be with them, Lord. And thank you so much. We have only hope that we know that you bless Abraham and Saul because he kept his faith on you. So we keep our faith that we will increase in our life as you blessed Abraham and Saul. Bless all the brothers and sisters here as you blessed Abraham and Saul. Blessing, surely I bless you. Multiplying, surely I will multiply you. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Continue to pray to God that we can support Him, and we're asking every member, even if you're not a member, to join us because we, we see the good work that He's doing there in India. We have other missionaries as well, Iraq, Venezuela, as examples, Canada. We're at the end of our service. Let's pray with a number here, Brother Iris. This is a prayer request. Brother Ira here and Brother Anthony. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we end our service with thanks that your gospel um, 
has reached this congregation via India, Brother Roy. We ask you to continue to bless him and uh, bless the hands that are aiding and helping him to preach the gospel. We lift up to you at this time as we close, uh, Brother Ira. Heavenly Father, would you be his provider, the one who gives him all the things that he needs, uh, make happen all the business transactions and connections that he's involved with, uh, his job opportunities, his life uh, as he desires to uh, have a happy marriage, be with him in his decision-making, in his guidance in these things, Heavenly Father. He trusts. He trusts you. He's come to his church family, and he's asked his church family to pray for him that these things might be accomplished in order that he might be a servant for you. And the same with Anthony. Anthony is here, Heavenly Father. He says, my father Raymond is in surgery right now. He has his church family to pray for him. He's having a toe removed because of diabetes, and he asked us to pray for his father and that uh, this operation will be su successful and there will be a speedy recovery. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful. We have our sister Barbara McCullough with us this morning. We're just elated to see that uh, she is well. We have others uh, Cheyenne Pacheco, she has prayer for her cousin, Michelle, who has COVID. Also for her uncle, Mike Brooks. Heavenly Father, for uh, Brenda, whose granddaughter and grandson both have COVID. We're asking for healing, asking for healing for Brother Neri. Um, he's looking uh, forward to getting this all behind him, Heavenly Father, as he prepares for surgery. He's talking with doctors. But we want you in the plan, Heavenly Father, because we know that you will bring him out of this with your blessing. We love you, Heavenly Father. We love all that you do. We lift up our entire prayer list to you. You know individually what each saint on our prayer list needs. And so we're asking you to be there for them, Heavenly Father, that they may continue to serve you. Be with this congregation. As we continue to serve and preach the gospel in the various ways in which we do. We lift up to you our missions, our missions work here. We lift up to you our benevolence work here. We lift up to you, Heavenly Father, our just our uh, ability to try to make possible the best place for our members to worship. We're doing everything that we can um, in view of all that's going on around us so that our members are comfortable, that our Hispanic and uh, brothers and sisters over there are comfortable. They are over there worshiping right alongside of us. And you have made this possible year after year because of our faithfulness. And so we're asking you to increase our faith. Be with us. In all that we do this afternoon, be with Brother Roy as he prepares to travel back home to India tomorrow. Let all of this go well. You've been watching over his family there who's waiting for him to come home. All the members there who are waiting for him to come home. We send our greetings. We send Brother Roy our greetings from Parkway Church of Christ. And also the congregation there, Parkway Church of Christ in Georgia, that also supports Thank you for Brother Stanley and Sister Deborah who made contact with Roy. And we're three years now in supporting India. We're so thankful for Christians being aware of ways to spread the gospel. We look forward to you coming back for your church. We want to be ready. All things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We can fellowship with each other now. <laughs>